This NBA Game Four Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. Hey, this is John Smoltz, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner on picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Real, real talk, Sean. Yeah, real talk only. NBA finals Ooh. greater than Stanley Cup finals. Wow, really? Oh I'm just really? an NBA guy, Sean. <laughs> through and through. Always have been. I've been enjoying both. We just watched the uh, Panthers get their first ever Florida Panthers first ever. Stanley Cup win against um, our Knights, or at least my Knights. I forgot you were on the Panthers, Ryan. But uh, who can remember? <laughs> uh, still, I thought it was a very good game. I mean, yeah, maybe a couple of bad calls, but um, yeah, Knights really, really should have ended that game and got up 3 0. Instead, they let the Panthers back there in was the a series 2 1. It was 2 1. There was a doink. Could have been 3 1. And the rest is history. I did a uh, NHL picks page again. Uh, I'll, I'll occasionally, uh, you know, drop oh, some picks in there. I what did have this? I did have the Panthers on the money line because I thought it was an empty the bucket situation. All right, Sean. They got everything they can. It, we're, but we're I'm no hockey sharp. We're, but, we're doing. But you it. should check out the NHL picks page. Next game, you're you're putting out a picks video where you're doing curls and mm. you're picking the hockey. Game. All right. Yeah. I, you know. Curls for the girls, as they uh, as they used to say your in the bi- weight room. Your biceps used to be a character on the show. They haven't been around. Yeah, well, c- it's because the Sixers suck, and then most of, <laughs> most of my jerseys are the. Uh, yeah, let's know, bring them back. That's the only reason I rock them is the tank tab. We're live here on YouTube, youtubecom slash sports gambling podcast. Uh, we're going to be joined in a second by the uh, guys from the NBA Gambling Podcast. Before we do that, of course. Oh, listen to that. It's getting jacked for the NBA final Stanley cup final. I know Colby Colby has been bothering us all day about the CFL. The CFL is back MLB NBA. Imagine if uh, you could take your favorite pet, AKA your lock and make it a little lock here, make a double size lock. Hey, that's a pretty big lock over there. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash edge. You can double your bet with zero interest. Hey, you have to pay the money back, but you can do it in four equal weekly installments. So you deposit a hundred, they match a hundred, uh, let you borrow a hundred there. You pay them back four weeks, $25 a week. And then you got your $200 bet there. Just that easy. You can also um, manage your limits, whatever it is, monthly, daily, weekly across all platforms in one simple dashboard. Again, it's a Visa card, Visa debit card, uh, the world's first ever bet now. Pay later Visa card. Double up. Support support SGPN and grow your bankroll by going to sportsgamblepodcast.com slash edge to sign up today. Sportsgamblepodcast.com slash edge. Must be 21 years or older. Probably give a call 1 800 Gambler. Just enjoying a little bit more of the music, Brad. I'm gonna let it up. Oh, no, I dropped it. Sean, off. yes. You know what they say about uh, Terrell's lock? Mm. When you're looking around the SGPN locks, it's super easy to spot Terrell's locks. It's just so it's just so big. It stands out. That <laughs> la- it's just a big lock. Well, I thought you were gonna call back to that uh, clip where they they kept talking about who is it uh, in the Stanley Cup yeah, the final. Knob. I was going with the knob, but you were talking locks, and I was trying to do a crossover oh, bit. The uh, the knob it's, thing. I mean, we could say we could say that to break down the whole uh, do, Zion do Williamson. Still that could be a whole other show. Do they still call it not like get get knobs knobber? <laughs> No, I don't know. I don't talk to any young people, Mm. Ryan. I will have to do a deep dive on that. Joining us here from the NBA gambling podcast, the WNBA podcast, WNBA gambling podcast, Mr. Terrell Furman, the villain himself. What's happening Terrell fellas. What's going on? And I can 
confirm my locks are very, very deep. <laughs> yeah, see? I told you. <laughs> there you go. I, Lock it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm not making this stuff up. Ryan, even from the last time we we already did a Days of Our League on the Zion Williamson situation, it feels like even from when we last yeah. did that a day and a half ago, there's <laughs> been more Zion Williamson yeah. stuff happening. Terrell, what do you what do you think ends up uh, happening with Zion Williamson and and does all this play, drama? Does he play basketball again? Well, you know, there's something in the water in South Carolina, as you know, the resident South Carolina expert, the guy that's Ooh. been in the area. I can tell you that there's something in the water, and it's got those guys acting crazy. And so, Zion Williamson, I can confirm he is expected to miss the season again, uh, partially because of injury. Partially because of pride, another reason because these women be tripping. You saying the I mean, water in South Carolina is contaminated by this squirt <laughs> juice that we were hearing allegedly? This this uh, adult film star just keeps firing off one after the other tweet about Zion Williamson. It is uh, it's just. I can uh, also confirm that she is going out sad. Yeah, she's going yeah. what? Going, going out, out sad. sad. That that that's. Young people lingo. Yeah, Sean, come on. That's that's what we're gonna start saying about <laughs> Niners fans. They're going out sad. Oh, okay. That you know that I mean? it's like not a happy ending. They're yeah. going out sad. All yeah, right. They're, be, they're being yeah. so. Yeah, Cowboys going uh, out sad this season. Puzzle we'll get you an Urban Dictionary. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you uh, bring on Scott first to ask him about the, uh, well, the squirting Scott, baby mama? Scott also, uh, you know, keeps up with all the NBA news. Joining us here from the Tennis Gambling Podcast, the NBA Gambling Podcast. Scott Rye Shell. What's happening, Scott? Yeah, nothing much. For the record, I'm Team Zion. I'm more familiar with his work than her work, so I'm, more, I'm a bigger fan of Zion personally. Oh, well, who is? Was, I mean, we don't know. Maybe. Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, this uh, woman probably the expert when it comes to load management. So, oh, wow. uh, <laughs> come that on, was that's well a, that was a good line. Well, Scott, that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> now you we should write that down for stand up for stand up. I, will, good line I right will. Now we know why he doesn't feel like Zion yet. <laughs> He's never getting up to hundred I mean, percent. It's like boxers. They say they don't have <laughs> sex uh, before the big fight. Zion's never, never felt ready for a game because apparently it hasn't been like four hours. Honey, help me get down to E <laughs> the funny. I mean, whatever uh, she thought they were dating yeah, and whatever. then he got someone else pregnant. She was blowing up his no, spot, not, but, but not for us to judge what your I can misunderstanding say is that after film study, Ooh. Of said star. Oh, she see. is a very strong woman, <laughs> and that is probably why Zion hasn't been playing in games. <laughs> she really, she really knows how to box uh, out. Great and great lower body. Really, yeah, I was going to say, in fairness, you need to be strong to to deal with Zion's girth. Um, it, it, the. <laughs> The whole situation. The whole situation is just. I, I thought. I thought she crossed. It. I thought just masterful. No, I, no, re no recognition at all. I thought she crossed the line when she started uh, saying, "I we were helping you train. Yeah. We were helping you lose weight." It's like, oh man, now you gotta call him fat too. Like, uh, well, it really. I mean, honestly no, though, man. if you're Zion, that is exercise. You probably it are. It is a little cardio. You probably My are writing point. it off as a as a personal trainer or something. <laughs> Uh, y'all may not know this, but oh. if you are talking to someone on Snapchat, you should mm. not be expecting for them to fly <laughs> you out and marry you. Like you should have a phone number by then. So if yeah. you're communicating on Snapchat only, it's not going well, sis. It's, it's for the record. It, I'm also not a fan of her strategy because of this outburst. She might have sabotaged future bag opportunities ooh, with other yeah. yeah, players. He wasn't playing the wall because now you talk too much. I can't trust you. I we yeah. gotta cut her off. She talked too much. Well, yeah. I feel like that's part of what Terrell meant when he said going out sad because now <laughs> all her all her eggs are in the basket. So I, I'll say this: I, something you know, maybe we talk about don't gamble. Uh, you know, have someone around to carry the drugs and the guns, and <laughs> don't sleep with porn stars, and small social media following better than large social media following. Yeah. That's a good good lesson. Like, That's all you need. Yeah. Make someone a star. Don't go find a star. There you go. Yeah. All right. Anything else to add? No, no, okay. no. Uh, we covered his we girth. Got, we we wanted to all. get there. We got his girth covered. We got it all. All right. Uh for the record, I don't think he ever plays again. 
it, it, it's weird. I, I I mean the fact that Demar Hamlin is is back in a Bills uniform before Zion's <laughs> and, playing and, is just again I I don't understand. This. I'll set the odds. Andrew Luck at plus one fifty versus Zion, <laughs> a person to play. Andrew, next. he's gonna come back from his backpacking in Europe. I, yeah, I mean, by, pursuing Sean's, his architectural <laughs> career. The fans miss Sean's biceps and his Andrew Luck impression. Oh, <laughs> hey guys, I'm back in Indy. Oh, it's great. Does uh, Tom Brady come back for? <laughs> Zion Wims. Which oh Ooh. wait, we didn't touch about this. I, I know it's not basketball, but if you didn't watch the Fanatics kind of video, so the Fana, Fanatic, Fanatics basically put on a uh, like this video where they had a bunch of rookies receive a message from a bunch of like vet slash Hall of Famer types, uh, and then received a jersey of theirs. Well, Tom Brady delivered the message to a couple of these people, and his eyes look like someone who's been. Uh, getting into the business, if you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's about weed. Oh, yeah. I, you know, that would actually be a healthy alternative to whatever <laughs> he was getting into. His eyes look dark, sunk in. I, I don't think he's playing quarterback this fall, Sean. Honestly, what well, just based on that video, like yeah, the, his eyes in those videos. Brady, Brady's in a weird headspace. Anyway, so you're okay. saying that Brady retired because they no longer drug test him? Is that the theory <laughs> that you have? Ooh, he's not married. He he doesn't have. I mean, he's. He's he's only mouth kissing his kids half the time, so I mean. So is he going past ayahuasca, or is that the is that the line? That, yeah, you know, I don't know set? what he's in. I, he's probably just doing like some weird diet fasting no, thing that's is. making him look. Everyone knows the kid who is real like straight edge, didn't do anything bad, and then they went off to college. Yeah, and they just went fucking crazy. <laughs> he's getting off the avocado and he's getting loose. Little animal fats in there. Probably some heroin, maybe some opiates. <laughs> allegedly, so you're saying at 45 he decided to go wild. Is that what yeah? You're he finally say? he finally had his first spring break, and he's going he's uh, going nuts. He's probably as someone who can potentially relate, he might be having some sort of midlife crisis and about about the meaning of the universe and if it's all going to work in 10 years. All right, let's all talk right. about the game. Going deep with Kramer. Not, yeah, not girth. That's the theme of this podcast. Uh, Nuggets, a uh, a nice win for them. One hundred nine ninety four over the Heat. Obviously, the big story was Joker with his crazy uh, thirty twenty ten uh, triple uh, triple double though. there. No, he didn't care. He, ca he he doesn't mean much no to I me. Team. And then uh, obviously Brown, aka Braun, with 15 points off the bench. We'll start there with you, Scott. I mean, you mentioned uh, they should be playing both Browns more and, and seeing more minutes, less Michael Porter Jr. Now, Michael Porter Jr. technically started, but only got 21 minutes. Uh, what'd you make of that uh, game three? Uh, overall, I had Denver winning, so I wasn't totally shocked. I said before the game that Miami's main way of winning, they have to get insanely hot from three because Denver is the much better team. They're the bigger team and the three point shot is the ultimate equalizer. But if Miami is not going to shoot well, they're screwed. They don't have a backup plan. And I do think that Butler, even though he was effective in terms of shooting, he wasn't really that great at facilitating or defending. And we saw Murray have a great game as well. But when you have two separate teammates with 30 point triple doubles for the first time in NBA history, it's safe to say the other team's not going to win. Yeah. But the real story for me was the fact that Miami once again was cold from three Denver dominated on the boards by about 25. And the first thing you could tell in the first five minutes of game one, when Aaron Gord had about 10 points, Denver is significantly bigger and there's nothing Miami can do about it besides hoping their guys hit three pointers. And that was not the case in game three. So once again, Miami can win games in the series, but if you tell me a team has to shoot 45% from three in order to win, I'm not going to pick you to win many games. Yeah, Tor so. Doris Burke. All, if you listen to the radio broadcast at all, she's been all over the size difference. Very <laughs> focused on the size. Uh, Bam, to your point, Scott. Bam had 17 rebounds, and the the Heat still got out rebounded by 25, which is which is kind of a crazy uh, stat. There, it does look like they could be getting Tyler Hero back. Bam out rebounded the rest of his team, I believe. If, is that accurate? Well, what uh, the second big, the second best rebound on the team was who? Struess with four. Struess really does look like the representation of like the tryhard from the rec league. Yeah, he really like when it looks good, it's like oh that's it that's awesome. But when it's bad, it's like oh my god, he's and, so far beneath the rim. And to your point, he had I, he actually had seventeen, and the rest of the team had sixteen. So yeah, there you go, not going to get it done. And yeah, that, Butler had seemingly been a facilitator in previous games, and then got away from it. I don't know if it was just a combination of Miami missing the shots that he was getting or him kind of played like a bitch. 
Um, a little bit like a bitch. Yeah, I don't know. He's been he's been like less aggressive. Um, what what was your make of game three there, Terrell? I think that it went exactly Denver's way. Like mm-hmm. my like Scott said, Miami was missing the three ball. They got two 30 point triple doubles, but this was only an eleven point game. You're telling me that Miami, who's living and dying by the three in this playoff run, and Joker and Jamal Murray both had 30 point triple doubles, and this is just an eleven point game, like game one. I I, I think that this is the Miami's doing some things right. They're not putting it all together, but we're not seeing Denver go out here and drop 120 plus points like they did in the first three rounds of the playoffs. So there's wins like there's minor wins here for Miami in their losses that make me feel good about them going forward and saying we still have a chance at this series. Mm. This is the real reason why Miami lost touch upon the supporting cast. Oh, you mentioned Struess before him and Vincent combined to go three for 17 from the floor and two for 10 from three. If that happens, you shouldn't even show up to the arena because they're the main three-point shooters on the team. So it's safe to say, of course, Miami's got to hit more shots. Mostly those two guys. Vincent was so good in the first couple of games in the series, and he basically no-showed game three. It's yeah, an he, interesting- got, he got into some foul trouble, especially where those there was those back-to-back fouls, which, I, I mean, especially the second one, I thought was pretty suspect. In general, I think the Nuggets got a pretty favorable whistle oh, compared definitely. to Miami. I mean, I Kramer, you were, you were on the <laughs> Nuggets, and you're like, oh, man, this is a good <laughs> sign if this is how things are shaking out. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I that that was my that was the key takeaway. I was well, like, and, right. and Miami has has thrived off these role players, whether it was Caleb Martin or Struess or Vincent. There's it, always been someone that's kind of stepped up, and there just really wasn't. It was just Butler it, and Bam, and no one else. Uh, I guess Caleb Martin did get to ten. It's the he case. Is over. This is the the beginning of the case against Butler for MVP. Mm. The, it, he doesn't seem to be the, the the reason they win or lose. It's the guys around him. Well, when yeah, Miami win, wins, I'd vote for Bam right now. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's tough too because he hasn't played well in the two losses. So if he plays really well in Game Four, obviously that he's right back but in the, it. And I think if it's close, they just default but to them the biggest winning game. hasn't been him. It's been oh, so and so had a big game, or this guy stepped up, or they I. No, but, but I mean, like they only had really, they only had one. He can't win. quantify it. If he does decent and he has an impact somewhat in the floor in all the games, and then you have Gabe Vincent this game, Bam this game, like somebody else, like constantly, and that's typically what happens. Caleb Martin one game, you have a Tyler Hero game, you have kind of everybody else, but he's the consistent factor. They're just gonna de facto give it to him. Now, now I think you have to, to give it to Bam at this point. I'm, if yeah, Miami, just, if, unless yeah. Butler goes crazy in these next couple of games, I think it actually might be Bam's to lose. But it goes back to my point. I still think Butler's hurt. You yeah. can tell he's clearly not moving around as well as he, he was earlier in the postseason. Yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't the. If lead- it's Bam's MVP, I don't think the Heat won the series, so it wouldn't matter. Uh, if, That's if the Heat come back and win, it's going to be because yeah, Jimmy it's kind of the interesting hypothetical. Point. They need to, they need a Jimmy Butler game to win this series. I'm yeah. I'm with you, uh, Terrell. Now I just I just read thanks to Easy on the YouTube chat. Uh, Underdogs Twitter uh, listed um, listed uh, listed Tyler Hero as out, which really again as a Heat backer, I that, like dropping him in in Game Four. Maybe he ends up giving you I'm a score and spark, but I, I I'm a little. I'm a little suspect of him just popping in there out of nowhere. Who do you think is the role player? If the, if you like the Heat, and we'll get to that in a second, but um, Terrell, who do you think is a, a, a Heat role player that's going to have a nice game here coming up in Game Four? Duncan Robinson. I'm in. Mm. I'm all in on Duncan Robinson in Game Four. Fellow podcast. Uh, if we're talking about role players, and it's just because when you watch the game and you kind of see the heat go on these stretches where they can't hit a three ball, where they're really struggling from three, Eric Spolster just does the de facto thing. Let me go get the guy we're paying $90 million and just get him off the bench. You go in there and hit a couple of threes and he'll come in the game and hit a three. He'll hit two. Like sometimes if he's hot, he'll hit three. He might hit four. Like Duncan Robinson is that guy that they keep going to when they say we need offense from the outside. And he, when he comes off the screen, he's, right there ready to shoot when he's out wide open he's ready to shoot so yeah Duncan Robinson for me I think that I'm going to be playing some type of alt threes line on him and just saying he comes off the bench and gets hot from gets hot from three and gives Miami that boost that they need Scott uh, Murray Joker it seems like they're using less um, pick and roll 
What do you what do you make of that? Do you think that's kind of been helping out their offense? Uh, for me, I actually didn't notice that at all. It okay. seemed like they were constantly sagging off of Joker towards the middle of the lane, and Joker just had a free run towards the hoop. So it did seem like they were kind of inverting some pick and rolls, but it really kind of confused me what Miami's coverage actually was against Joker because the amount of times Joker just caught the ball around the free throw line and had either a one-on-one -on -one matchup or nobody in his face really didn't make any sense to me. And Joker had to had time to fully evaluate and dissect the defense. He was able to get into the lane. Once again, I know you can't stop Joker. I made the I made that case the entire postseason and the series in particular. But you're looking at what Miami's done. Joker's had back-to-back -back games with 30-plus points at 40 of the game before, and he could have had 30 in game one if he actually tried to score after the you know first or in the first two quarters. Miami's defense on Joker, they're not even trying to make it hard on him at this point. It just feels <laughs> like Joker's getting to all of his spots with really no resistance, and they're trying some zone. They're trying some other looks. But when Gabe Vincent is going to be fronting Joker in the top of yeah. the key of the zone, you're wasting your time. Like, I don't know what that's supposed to do. They're going to throw it over him. So I did see a lot of pick and rolls. So I actually disagree with that. But I do think at the end of the day, Miami's at least got to try something because of right now, Joker's catching the ball exactly where he wants to. And they're really not making him second guess anything. It seems like Joker gets the ball and he knows exactly what he's going to do every time he has the ball. I, I want to see more Cody Zeller on him just for the uh, comedy, oh. just for the jokes. <laughs> him getting uh, Joker destroying Cody Zeller has been uh, it's has really been it, one it, of my favorite moments. Hundred percent more pounds. doubles though. Like you just dare Denver, like Michael Porter Jr. I know he's a good three point shooter season long based on current form. Just ignore him. You can't yeah. let Joker keep getting into the lane my, for free flow. My yeah. my whole strategy would be to give Michael Porter the ball as much as possible and trust that he makes a bad decision. Try, try and he, he's the guy. Him he's into, the weak link on the team when it comes well, and, to decision making. And and, and again, mm. like Jamal Murray can't get to thirty points. Was that if, what, the, if the Heat are going to was win. that triple double double nugget? Uh, no pun intended. Was that a all time like all games or a postseason thing? I think that was all time all Post. games. Oh, I, that's I'm what it said it on. Just that's NBA what it finals. said on ABC for the initial broadcast. But that's by the insane. way, shout out to Murray for that generational stat padding for the rebound there. <laughs> But once again, I feel like the fun joke of the series was, oh, we're going to force Joker to score. That's the secret to stopping Denver. And then you look around, you realize Joker's getting free layups in every possession. And you're like, how are we supposed <laughs> yeah, to win? I, I think they took it too far. It, it's really, the idea is you let him score <laughs> by completely shutting down yeah. Jamal Murray. They forgot about that second part. Like they didn't do that that's, at all either. That, it's not about making it as easy as possible for Joker. It's focusing your, your defense on a guy like Jamal Murray. Denver won a game in 2023 by 15 <laughs> points. And they hit five three pointers in the entire game. Like I understand the argument is, you know, maybe we'll let Joker score, we'll hold the assist, and Joker had a triple double anyway. But you're looking at these actual shot attempts Joker's getting. These look free, don't they? Like there's no resistance at all most of the time. Yeah, I mean, if I'm if I'm the Nuggets, I continue to just get in the paint, get Joker in the paint, and and you know, the, the Miami has really had trouble. Um, answer in that, but let's do it. Let's talk game four picks. Uh, how do you see this? How do you see this game shaping up here, Terrell? Yeah, I'm going to Miami Heat. Let's to go. Get one at home, Dog. tie the series up, send it back the other way. I think that now this is the adjustments, the adjustments to the adjustments, the adjustments to the adjustments to the adjustments, and Eric Spoelstra <laughs> finding out different ways of hey, we got to get this offense going. I, I mean. You can sit here and say what you want about Miami Heat three point shooting, but they've been hot from three for the entire playoffs. Yeah. Like at some point, we just got to admit this is what this team is doing right now. And they're going to, they may have their games where they're not, but there's more games where they are hot than they are when they're not. And so this is what this team is going to do. They're going to find their, their shooters open in three and they're going to get them good looks and they're going to find a way to kind of get that score up higher and higher and higher while playing some pretty solid level defense. And they've been playing good defense again, two 30 point triple doubles and the team only scored one Oh four. Yeah. I mean, like, that's pretty but still one, one Oh nine. <laughs> yeah. Still, that's really good. Like, yeah, it's that's not like one. Solid. It's not in the one fifteen, not one twenty. This uh, jumped out at me. Anytime this Miami Heat talks about competitiveness, 
it seems the you seem to see a result there on the court. Jimmy Butler, quote, tomorrow we're going to come out with a lot more energy. We're going to compete at a high level. We're going to get one at home. I think I feel pretty confident in this Miami Heat's uh, ability to bounce back. Like they bounce back from the game one loss. They bounce back from losing three games in a row to win on the road in in game seven against Boston. Like they really have a fight in them. I understand the Nuggets are the more talented team, but I also think the quick turnaround relatively going from a Wednesday to Friday game, I think favors the heat favors the home team. I think this is going to go back to two. The NBA certainly wants it to be two, two guaranteeing yourself uh, a a six game there. I think it's going to be a friendly whistle for the heat. I think they're going to hit a few more of their threes. And I think they're going to win this game catching three and a half. They're plus plus one forty on the money line. You know, I'm riding with the, the Miami heat here. Kramer, what's your, what's your take? Are you got your stick with your nuggets? What I assume who's the younger team, the nuggets, right? I'm assuming so because Miami yeah. yeah. Udonis has yeah. them drive everyone's <laughs> yeah. agent. Yeah, I was about I, to say Udonis has them. I'm just wondering if that's a true statement. The what short turnaround helps. Well, the heat. also, also, I, I would say this: the, the Nuggets, uh, Mike Malone, like pulled out a like, "Hey, win one for the Gipper" type speech. Yeah. He was fired up. He said, "Like we're gonna win this fourth quarter." Yeah. It, it felt like they were going all in, and yeah. I think it might be tough to get up for this uh, game four game relatively. No, I think they realize I mean, obviously they it's got, the NBA if, finals, if they play but, their game, they they can they, like. I think we we were discussing they, the Heat have to score 110 points, I think, to beat the Nuggets. Yeah, and so the the Nuggets just need to go out there and play their game, and mm-hmm. they they win. And I think what they're what Mike Malone's now saying is, all right, we got that loss out of our system. Let's win this one and go back and finish this at home. They don't want to come back for Game Six. They've seen how those stories go. So I I absolutely think they've figured it out. They're better. You're going to see a lot of lot of sharps like yourself who keep the biceps underneath the cloth uh, coming in here talking <laughs> about how this is a must win spot. And I think people are going to get slaughtered. I think it's going to be one of those who blo- is it one I, of those bloody bloody. ABC did have a uh, <laughs> before game three. Who is this more a must win for? <laughs> I think now for the Heat definitely. But yeah, I mean, no, I, this I think, is a must win for I, I both think, teams. I think Denver rolls. I think I think we're gonna. I'm, see, I'm basically yeah, rolling back my. Heat. By the I way, I don't see this Heat team rolling over at home. I, I didn't it, update it, people, Sean. Yeah, that 98 to one, uh, same game parlay yeah, that, that I gave out. How that? Well, hit? decent sweat. Murray had three at halftime. Didn't get any in the second half. So that was the uh, three three pointer. So that was what I ultimately killed it. But a fun sweat for 98 to one. But yeah, I mean, I I I same handicap as the last game. Denver plays their game. Denver wins. We didn't see any of the bullshit threes. We 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 didn't see any of these fucking uh, like borderline NBA players doing shit. I it's the it's the classic. Like if someone steps up, maybe maybe, but they need that to happen. Jimmy Butler's not right. That's the problem. Michael Jordan isn't flowing freely <laughs> through his body. By I did way, see someone do a uh, a Michael Jordan. Uh, you know how they did the Michael Jordan Jimmy Butler side by side with uh, Christian uh, Brown there for, of the Nuggets, oh, which was wow. it was a pretty. Uh, how does he not play more minutes? I, I don't know. His he, hamstrings he really, are, are always loose. For it, so yeah, you Scott know. was all over it. Great call by well, you, Scott. He, he wears the tights to keep his hamstrings <laughs> warm at all times. He's ready to go. <laughs> Energy. It does look like sometimes again, old guy moment here, but I feel like I'm watching Peter Pan with Dang. all these guys you, in shorts wearing tights. Would you like to And that's uh, where I think the adjustment is though. Mm. I think it's right there. You you sit there and you say Christian Braun can't go out there and get 15 points again. Yeah. Like Well, I mean what, that's what, the Heat's game is have a random yeah. dude off the bench yeah. to help you win. And and Bruce Brown, you gotta you gotta limit Bruce Brown. You gotta listen Christian Braun, Christian Brown, whatever. I, I at this point it's been Braun for literally until this <laughs> series. Like I don't now know it's what Brown. point you it can't change Brown. it now. We're too late. <laughs> other Christian other Brown. guys who have had that name, it was Braun for sure. Yeah. Uh I did put in an underdog uh three three legger or with they, I got I got an alert in my phone. It was like, "Do you want to start your your three your three pick uh, slate with a Jimmy Butler over a half point?" I was like, "Sure, oh, Underdog's great." So, and uh, if you if you haven't signed up already, UnderdogFantasy.com promo code SGPN, hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. But they do give you free yeah, scares like that. So I did uh, Joker over twenty three and a half rebounds and assists, and I did Braun Brown over seven and a half. 
uh, points, rebounds, and assists. <laughs> I think you got to go under no, on no. him just because I I don't see him doing it back to back games. His energy, it's like you have to reflect the Heat energy back at them with mm. this tryhard who wears tights. Scott, I'm a I'm guessing you're gonna be on the Nuggets here. I think you had Nuggets yeah. in five originally. This feels like if you're on the Nuggets in five, you're probably on the Nuggets here. What what are you doing? Well, mathematically speaking, they have to win this game <laughs> in the next game for them to it's win. A must win. So. Again, that's what I said. It's a must win. Yeah. So I'm gonna be on the Nuggets. Now there was a piece of news that kind of came out earlier on Thursday, which was Murray having a bit of a hand in injury. It wasn't anything serious, but he had a bit of a floor burn where a bit of skin was missing from his palm. So hmm. I am curious if that's gonna potentially impact his shooting moving forward. We'll see. Uh it didn't really impact him at all. I don't know when he actually suffered the injury, but the point is I'm just mentioning it because I saw and I thought it was interesting, but still I got to take Denver here. Once again, Denver on every possession is getting a better look, or I should say, if you look at the entire game, Denver's shot quality is significantly higher. It is what it is because they have Joker who's unguardable. And I think if you like Miami in this game, you have to parlay it with Jamal Murray under in points yeah. because if Murray goes for 28 or 29, Denver's winning this game by 15. Like just and, simply put, Miami and, doesn't have enough guys who can actually score on a regular basis to match the consistent production that Joker's going to give you and probably Murray, who finally woke up in the series after being a bit quiet in the first two games. But with Butler being a little bit banged up and with once again relying on Struess and Vincent and these guys to step up and hit some threes, Denver scored 109 points, only making five three pointers in 2023. That doesn't happen that often. So I'm on Denver. Joker might walk into another 35, 20, and 15. Nobody would be surprised. I was really a fan of Malone staying with Joker and Murray to yeah. start the fourth quarter when mm. they were up by double digits anyway. He basically told this team, listen, we choked away game two. We were up in the fourth quarter. Joker, no, you're staying in the game. We're winning this game. And I do think, once again, Denver is going to try to basically end the series by trying to win this game. I do expect a better effort for Miami, and I actually think the short turnaround does help the Heat because they played so badly, you want to just go out there and forget it and play as quickly as possible. So I do think the short turnaround helps, but with Butler being banged up and once again having to rely on a lot of role players to consistently shoot above their averages compared to Joker, who's the best player in the league at this point. I, I don't think it's really debatable. And Murray, who woke up, and once again, Br uh, Brown, who even if he doesn't, give, he doesn't give you 15, at least he gives you energy, he gives you intensity, and the fact that they finally started benching Porter Jr. for being lazy on defense and for being basically a non-factor on offense, I think it really helps Denver out. So I'm on Denver. I expect another Joker masterclass. I so just again, like scientifically, I would expect that the team that trains natively at altitude mm. to have better recovery when at sea level than the team that trains natively at sea level. This is why all of our Olympic training facilities are at altitude. Well, yeah, and and probably and so, it's probably tough to train in Miami to keep your keep your head focused there. Oh yeah, I mean a lot of swollen knobs. Um, yeah, I, I for, yeah to me that that's the I think I think this helps the Nuggets. I think I like what Malone says, and I think Spolstra looked like a man who was out of. Uh, Completely out of adjustments. Mm. What do they? I do? just want to ask though, th it, with Spolstra's adjustments. Sorry to interrupt for a second. No, no, no. we're talking about the adjustments Spolstra can make. What moves does he have besides yeah. hoping Miami shoots forty percent from three? <laughs> well, that, that's the point, well, right? Like, I, I, it, it, yeah, I guess the if you're if you're a Nuggets backer, you're saying Spolstra's pulled every card out of his out of his deck. If you're a Heat backer, you're card? saying he's got one left in his sleeve. I don't know what it is. Jimmy, call but your dad. I think you. I think but that that's you. One, you stop it. underestimating some of these other guys, oh. like. Christian Braun. A lot of those plays were just not paying yeah. attention yeah. to him on back cuts and him getting wide open and being able to cut towards the basket. Pay attention to some of that stuff. We talk about, you know, Caleb Martin and the fact that, hey, oh, Caleb Martin is good. All right. Hey, guys, play defense on that guy. And now his totals have come down. Same thing with Christian Braun. Oh, this guy is playing well. Okay. Play defense on that guy. Let's actually pay attention to him and not just treat him as what he's been for the course of the playoffs as somebody we're not really curious as, you know, as an offensive threat. So it's a great point. I think that it's a little bit of focusing on a lot of those other guys and locking back in on team defense and saying, yes, all right, bet, bam, do your best on Joker. Your defensive player of the year. Do we want you to hold him to 25 points? Yes. 
If you don't, it's going to be fine because we trust everybody else to defend everybody else, and they're not going to run the score up on us. Yeah, I mean, again, the fact that Eric Spolstra, I think, is pretty technically sound as a coach, former video coordinator. I think he can, like, some of the stuff they were doing. I think it was awesome a mix with of the cut ups. mix up of effort, and also to to Terrell's point, like they were just playing sloppy and letting things pass. I think it's a mix of effort and. And just like, uh, yeah, not being wide awake. Sure, looked like he was gonna have to go through a little bit of a torture <laughs> set. Like Riley was gonna like clamp, put some clamps on uh, his nipples. I, I, and just I think I think you're gonna get a much more intense, focused Miami Heat team. Now, if Denver still beats them, I think it's just because of the talent gap. And uh, mm-hmm. Mike Malone's not a he's obviously a, a, a solid coach oh. as well. But I just think I think you're effort wise, I'm very confident in this Heat team and. And any games where they've needed that extra effort, they've come through. So I'm going to keep riding them. But uh, Terrell, as a as a fellow Heat backer, as a as a fan who buys into Heat hashtag Heat culture, you say Heat Packer. <laughs> what do we uh, What do we What do we do? Hey, what hey, are, hey, I got that too. <laughs> what are we so. doing? Uh, what are we doing prop wise? All right, prop wise here. It's I mean, I've been on it for the series. I'm currently sweating it. 26 and a half was the line for the series. Jamal Murray's at 26 right now with that 34 point game, which makes me feel good because it took a 34 point game for him to get just to 26. So I'm going back to the well. If I think Miami wins the game, I think that is Joker that does majority of the scoring. And I think everybody else comes down and the main Ooh. person has to come down is Jamal Murray. So I'll be taking Jamal Murray under 20. What is that? So I, I'm it's seeing 26 and a half, I think. Yeah, 26 yeah. and a half. 26 and a half. But then you can adjust it. I, I kind of like. Mm. Here, I'm, all, I'm cooking we, up a same game parlay here with Heat money line, Murray under. And I, do I want to get greedy? 23 and a half plus 140. What do you think about that, Terrell? Is that too far down? I think it's pretty all right because I'm expecting, you know, more more of an attention shift towards him. Maybe they throw a couple of double teams at him. I saw him throw a double team at him actually towards the end of that game. And it actually worked out really good in the possession because the ball rotated over to Jokic, who drove to the basket, and they were able to get somebody there in his face. And it was actually a came up missed possession, and he were going out in transition. So maybe there's more of that. And they say, hey, all right. I mean, we couldn't guard Jokic anyway. He was getting free lanes to the basket anyway. Let's throw this double team at Jamal Murray, get the ball out of his hands, and let's just hope and pray for a miss on Jokic. And so I think that over here, Jamal Murray, a little bit more attention. I can see that 23 and a half adjusted line, and he probably ends the game with like 20, 21 points. Scott, what do you got uh, prop wise for the listeners? Yeah, so I see Jimmy Butler's points, rebounds, and assists at 39 and a half. Mm. I'm going to go to the under again. I mean, simply put, I still think he's injured. And I know he finally woke up offensively with scoring and might have screwed over my assist prop in the process. But even with a good scoring game that he had in game three, he only had four rebounds and he only had two. He only had two rebounds and he played 40 minutes. So clearly he's having to conserve energy one way or another. And either he's going to try to score or facilitate. But it does seem like effort wise, he can't go as I'd say all out as he was earlier in the postseason. I think I'm on his under at 39 and a half points, rebounds and assists. It really seems like he's compromised. I think it's pretty obvious up to this point. And because of that, I'm going to keep trying to fade him in some way, because once again, I know heat fans are expecting Butler to wake up and have a big game. They're going to need him to, but the one time he put most of his energy into scoring in game three, he put no energy into anything else. So i feel like fading all three of them combined makes sense. I'm going to go to a Butler uh, under 39 and a half points, rebounds and assists. Hemi buckets. Uh, Scott is not a wow. believer, Ryan. What are you doing? I'm a believer in healthy Butler, <laughs> but he's not healthy. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Like I, I don't think they've adjusted his uh, props enough and playing points, rebounds and assists. You're kind of binding the idea of like, Hey, he's just going to be slightly down from what his maxes are because there's been moments where he has hit the assist, but not the points or even uh, last game. I think he was over on his points, but then he lost it on the rebounding and assist. So that sounds I'm, I'm going to join Scott doing really? that for fading. sure. No. Yeah. Fading Jimmy Butler. And don't, don't we also just jump on the joker? Like, Joe, I was going to take points, rebounds and assists. And I saw it was at 54 and a half. I still like the over, but 54 and a half is so wild. That I had to like insane. hesitate. 
Well, for That's reference, so that same forty-point prop that we uh, infamously and famously hit game yes. one as a team, uh, it's now plus five fifty. It was 10, wow, it was all the way from ten to one. Ten to one. Well, that was game. That was game two. That wasn't game one. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, game right. two. Yeah. Well, well, uh, sorry, some so many infamous moments. I I can't, can't get them straight. Yeah, I would say we got to go. Maybe we don't play. Maybe I just go points for Joker. Okay. I'll just I'll play points for Joker at uh, thirty and a half, mm. and then I'll yeah I'll fade Butler. I really like that because I think if anyone's gonna be, if anyone's gonna be uh, more worn, it would be Jimmy Butler, right? Unless they shoot him up. You think he's in Kilmer's office right now getting the needle? <laughs> he's definitely. Uh, All right, we got some great uh, edge boosts in the uh, YouTube uh, chat here again. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com <laughs> slash edge double up. Uh, on your, what are you laughing at? Right? I just, I, I couldn't help but think that Zion's probably been edge boosting <laughs> a lot lately. Uh, yeah, he's probably he, he needs to lay off the uh, boost. He doesn't need to. Du- that's too many problem. double he downs. He was doubling down too many times. Uh, please, uh, responsible use there, uh, Zion. Yeah. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge. So easy has what does easy have? Robinson over one and a half threes. Martin over one and a half threes. Love. Over a half steals and Joker over 12 and a half rebounds, 15 to 1. He likes that. Uh, Jake, uh, merch got himself. Paquin coming in with Duncan 10 plus, Struz 15 plus, Butler 8 rebounds at 90 to 1. Oh man, I, oh my mm. God. Jake, I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to uh, get down on that because. Again, Duncan Shrews, Butler, eight rebounds. Yeah, no, I I like that. That is a fun one. I mean, one. at that point, at that point, just put Miami to win the game. Wow, yeah. oh, you got wow. you got to put Duncan, if you're getting contribution. Like that's what I think it is. Yeah. If you're getting contribution, double digit contribution from a bunch of other Miami mm. guys, and Butler gives you twenty five, you know, thirty. I think is a lot. But if he gives you around twenty twenty five, and you're getting double digit contribution from like five other guys on the team. That's a pretty good recipe for them to start trying to, you know, win games. And, and Struess is good when he has like low scoring games. I I, I played him, uh, I think game two, coming off a zero point game, game one, and he he hit his over pretty easily. Uh, coming off a three point game, there he was one for seven. I I personally like uh, Gabe Vincent over as well. Besides the Jamal Murray adjusted under twenty three and a half, also like Gabe Vincent over fourteen wow. and a half. Plus one fifty. You, you can obviously put that together with Murray Heat money line. Get that up to like plus eight fifty. But uh, let's see what else do we got in the chat here. Uh, Robinson, Shrews, Vincent, all three plus threes is twenty five fifty. I yeah yeah. I mean maybe, but I I I kind of like Jake's. Uh, even though Jake's is ninety to one, I kind of like that just because it's it feels like uh, pretty random. Uh, Chad saying, uh, "Bam over thirty four and a half points, rebounds, and assists is his lock." That one's a good one to good. play because I feel like that's that's a good prop because it, either game script, either Miami wins or Nuggets win, I feel like that one is still alive. Feels like Bam should be like. It feels like there's some sort of alpha. Pa- uh, not to lean again on my youth, my vast youth sports coaching mm. experience, but mm. uh, a lot of times, especially with the girls, you'll have this alpha pecking order, and no matter what, if you're like the number one, will never or the number two will never challenge the number one. It almost feels like Bam needs Jimmy Butler to sit down for a little bit so he can just really assert himself. Because I, I, I would imagine if I, if I was a, a Heat stand, I would want to see Bam just go nuts. That's their best chance. Jimmy Butler looks like a he just kind of looks like a punk bitch right now. Right. How I, dare you? Uh, hopefully he hears this and it motivates. <laughs> Man, oh. he hears everything. Go ahead and fire up Jimmy <laughs> hey, 40 plus. Jimmy Buckets hears everything. Not I worried. know. I want to throw that in there. Just to, just because of all this slander, Kramer. Jimmy Buck uh, Jimmy Butler, I I don't know where I can find that. But if they say if you're gonna that. have a take, have a take. <laughs> Jimmy's a bitch. Thirty-five plus. I'm seeing plus four seventy-five. I I think this could be the game. Uh, but Gerald Jones in the YouTube chat, uh, Terrell, are we worried? <laughs> Miami, twenty-seven playoff games out of gas. He's saying Nuggets, Nuggets roll here. Are we worried about how many games the C team has played? No, I mean I've never used <laughs> the amount of games that is. I, it's the NBA Finals at this yeah. point, man. Like. Yeah. It don't I don't care how many games you play. You're going out there. If you played 27 games, if you only played what's the minimum you could have played at this point? Uh 
16. Well, 16 15, total. So right? 14, 12 plus 14. 20. Yeah. If, yeah. If you played the bare minimum and you swept all the way, you are going to give your all in the NBA Finals. <laughs> You're going to try to pass out in the NBA Finals. I don't care about how tired you are, how many games you played. Like, it, that, that's not an excuse. Yeah, also to kind of agree with that point, or is it, does that imply that Miami wasn't totally exhausted when they played like 25 games going into game two? Like when you draw the <laughs> yeah, line at elevation? Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's that pivotal 26 game that really got them. No, I, I think the main issue once again, isn't the, isn't the exhaustion. I just think Denver's more talented. I just yeah. think it's as simple as that. No, I, I, it is. That's why this series is kind of fun because D Denver clearly is the more talented team, but I do give a slight edge to like hustle, you know, old school I fundamentals, coaching to the heat team. And that's why, that's why it is a heat fun, culture. that's coaching why it's a, I'll it's agree a fun with. series. We, we got to talk about hustle though. Cause Denver out rebounded them by 25. Yeah. Like so, I, I don't size. know if I can give Miami the, the hustle I, award I guess, anymore I guess, when they get buried on the boards at home <laughs> in game three, I guess hustle throughout the playoffs. But to your point, Scott, you're right. Like game three was a low effort game from the heat. And again, that's why I like him to bounce back. But you're right; like they, they don't, wow. they didn't deserve the hustle points uh, for Game Three. Certainly didn't get him. Scott, Scott, any other, any other <laughs> bets uh, you want to toss out? Sean's never uh, disagreeable well, in the office. I do still <laughs> like the Murray under in points. I am going to co-sign that, either okay. the hand injury or not. Miami's going to have to at least keep him under control because they can't stop Joker. So I think they're going to have to do a better job on Murray. Maybe the hand issue bothers him. If it doesn't, then it is what it is. But if you're trying to look for another reason to to uh, fade Murray, that hand issue could be a reason. I'm still going to take under on Porter Jr. points. Just get him off the floor. Just simply put, I don't think he's really done anything since game one. And I think we can agree based on how Denver looked in game three, they look significantly better with him on the bench. Can we agree on that? Yeah, no, definitely. And they, they, when they come out and say, yeah, he's still the starter, but he played half the minutes and it's not an injury thing. Clearly something's going on. And Mike Malone, I don't think is, I think he'll like give him the starting, like he'll be out there as the starting five, but he's not going to see, he's not going to see 35 minutes. Right? I no, think I'm, I'm assuming it'll be around 20, maybe less to be yeah. honest. It really isn't even about the shooting. It's about just the lack of defensive IQ. I know yeah. he's improved on it over the past couple of years, but that's why Malone hated him early in his career. Why he constantly benched him. <laughs> it's because Porter really isn't that good of a defensive player. He's gotten better, but in the series with the amount of off ball motions and actions that Miami runs, but uh, you're looking at Porter. He's lost all the time trying to, trying to keep track of these shooters. I think he's going to be on the bench for a decent amount of this game. So I still like the Porter unders. Hmm. My take on that. And as a heat backer, I think he plays more one. Cause I think the heat are up and they're going to need his scoring, mm. but it's because he scores enough, not a lot, but enough where you can't bench him. So say he comes out and he hits two threes goes a little cold. Maybe, you know, he picks up around eight points in the first half or so. And you're like, Oh, okay. Like that's, that's all right. Is that world beating? Is that really, really affecting the game? Maybe not, but in a game, if you're down and Michael Porter Jr. They're saying, all right, we need some scoring. We need somebody to hit these threes because they're hitting threes and eight hey, go out there. Braun's not going to be able to do it for us. He hits one and just goes and gets like 12. Like at this point, the, the line's getting terribly low where it's like, I don't even want to play in. I'm afraid of playing in under at this point because they just keep dropping the line, dropping the line, dropping the line. And you saw it with Strews. Or somebody, you're gonna get that game eventually, and so maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's, I mean, like, it, it is. Yeah. It's it is one of those things uh -huh. where everyone is kind of seeing the same thing of like, hey, the coach clearly hates him. He's not gonna play him. Let's all bet the under, which really scares me. But I'm certainly not gonna take the, the over. first two games. He had 99 percent of the money on his over two and a half threes. First two games, 99 <laughs> percent of the money. Yeah, it's just first classic game, three, right? He went, th what did he, he go first game? Two for 11, three for 11? Something. I, don't, I, I think, think it was two for 11 in game one. Then he made one in game two, and he scored a total of two points in game three. So <laughs> once again, you might be right, but I, I can't back Porter at this point. But I think one uh, thing he's that- He's a no bet. He's a no bet. Yeah, There's one thing so. Kramer mentioned before with uh, Brown. He gives you energy. At least he'll backdoor cut. He'll do something yeah. off ball. Porter Jr., 
kind of sits in the corner and pouts a lot for a lot of these possessions. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it come around screens when he's involved in the action. But if he's not, does he really do much to get himself open or does he just stand there hoping for the ball? No, he's he's definitely the weak link on that team. That's my point. But I, that's why I'm leaning to Porter Jr. unders because if he's not going to hit his threes or if he's not going to do a better job at getting himself open when the play's not designed for him, then he doesn't really improvise enough to get points. Yeah, I mean, I like the I think, angle. I think that the under I'm still targeting is Aaron Gordon. Oh, I mean, okay. And what do you Aaron What do you like Gordon. about that under? So one like points, rebounds, he, he which draw, part? Uh, points. Uh, oh, points. Okay. I actually like his rebounds over, and just because of the fact of the amount of minutes on the court and his size, like he can walk into. They've been setting his line really, really low. But those points under. First of all, he's going up against Kevin Love, and so your automatic two charges. Just just go ahead and pencil yourself in for two well, fouls. Well, game two, you're getting, in game you're two, getting two Kev- charges against Kevin Love. <laughs> in game That's two, Kevin certain. Love was playing good defense on him. Yeah, you, and he's forcing charges. Yeah. <laughs> so so like that's that's number one, but it's more of the energy and on the defensive end for me, and mm. the fact of he is Jimmy Butler's primary defender, and yeah. he has to exert a lot of energy defensively, and a lot of those times when they're going on the offensive end of the court, like. He's just kind of sitting there biding his time, waiting for Jokic to find him, and then he goes and he makes a move. But if Jokic doesn't find him, he kind of just disappears on that offensive end. And so Aaron Gordon's under, uh, I don't even know where his, is it still at 12 and a half? Let's see here. Aaron Gordon's points prop is be sitting here, here at 12 and a half still. 12 yeah. and a half minus 130, juice to the under. He went under 12 and a half in two of the three in the past two games, except for that first game where he came out and hit like his first six shots in a row. Uh, he's gone under 12 and a half in the past two games. Been a little bit of sweat, but I still think it's a pretty good bet to make. I'm taking under 12 and a half with Aaron Gordon. And he also can't shoot free throws. Oh, yeah. Very great true. point. Yeah, if you're if you're worried, that's a nice uh tiebreaker there at the end. All right, guys. Uh thanks for Ooh. calling in. Oh, I, I I was excited. I thought we were gonna get some. Do you not have a big massive DJ in play? No, I mean I gave out the uh, I okay. gave out the I I'm basically stealing uh, Jake's. Uh, that is my is that's my crazy long shot because he he laid it out great. I, how do I not take that one? Okay. What else do you got, Ryan? I mean I I'd probably I, I'll I'm gonna alt the uh, just the spread. What do you what what's your alt spread? We'll go to we'll say minus. Minus eleven is is two eighty. That seems maybe like I'll I'll go there. All right, but yeah, Jake's Duncan uh, Robinson ten plus points, Shrews fifteen plus points, and and Butler eight rebounds at ninety to one. That one feels like a winner. And who, who, and Heat money line in there is you get it up to one hundred forty eight to one. Let's go, baby. Two bucks. No, oh. come on, two dollars. That's code. <laughs> All right. That's code for $200. Ever since the gun incident, we've had a talking code. I mean, the heat is in the hat. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for hopping on the show. Make sure you follow Scott and Terrell on Twitter. Uh, Terrell at really rel double underscore Scott uh, on Twitter at right shell radio. Check him out on the NBA gambling podcast, WNBA gambling podcast. Scott's got the Whoa. tennis gambling podcast. Uh, so many, so many, uh, so many ways to tune in, catch some winners. Uh, speaking of winners, uh, this gentleman, I forgot, I almost forgot to get this uh, in. We got a bad review, Ryan. What from, happened? From what? a guy, Lexa sucks. Uh, left us a one star review. We are not a one star show at all. The title says great story time for kids. I'm Ooh. guessing he's being sarcastic. I do have a soothing voice. I've <laughs> he been probably, told that before. You probably don't want to hear the Zion stuff. One star, nothing but ridiculous narratives and losing picks. Good to listen to. If you want to fade someone One first star, off huh? ridiculous <laughs> narratives, I'll take that critique, but losing <laughs> picks. Are you kidding me? I, I we've been on an insane heater. I'm on 22 and 10. ATS. I'm back into the NBA. I'm 22 and 10 ATS for the USFL. 40 to one. I'm pulling up my tally site record right now. Oh no. See what you guys did. 42 (laughs) and 27. 
Again, I don't like touting, but if you're going to, if you're going to back me into a corner and say losing picks, yeah. a ridiculous narratives. Yeah. He, they're, he's they're had fun. it up to here and he's going to pull the car <laughs> over and pull out the tally Kramer's, side Kramer's also been on a crazy heater. We gave out uh Jokic uh, over 30, over 39 and a half points parlayed with the heat money line. as a team, as a team, <laughs> we've given out a shit ton of winners. You are a maniac, sir. If I, I mean, I, here's the thing. If someone, the you next person challenge there, him to a bet off. Well, yeah, obviously I'll challenge anyone to yeah, a bet off, we'll but bet I, off. I'm challenging the listeners. Someone needs to leave a review that says <laughs> with the username Lexa is awesome oh. and a five star review and and shit on this guy. Clearly, this guy's still hung up on Lexa, but um, yeah. Well, he should be. Uh, ma- he should make sure he unplugs that <laughs> when he gets to the hotel room. Uh, yeah. So screw that guy. Leave us a nice five star review, uh, or you know. Yeah, actually, yeah. Nice five star review. That makes everyone happy. Might win a uh, Listen, SGPN gift card. Sean is really upset about this. <laughs> no, if I, you could just—he's uh, really upset about. Oh this. yeah, I'm gonna be tossing and turning yeah, all night. Let's just uh, let's make sure that we get Sean off this deep, deep, horrible exactly. thought. <laughs> all right. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he's Ryan. Did you know, Sean? Duncan Robinson, largest contract by an undrafted player, $90 million. Kramer, let it ride.